Stiff fucking odds. Oh my dear god. Where do I even start with this movie? People, and even myself, often ask, Josh, what is the absolute worst movie you've ever seen? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I waited for a very special occasion to make a video on that exact film. But before we get into this, I just want to say thank you. Um, we hit a thousand subscribers, which is just an insane amount of people. So thank you for all the suggestions, all the comments, all the support, everything. If you've been around since Zombie Driftwood all the way until 200 miles an hour, you've added to this little community we're growing, and it's I, I couldn't thank you enough. We've come a fairly long way from filming at my mum and dad's house in between shots of the dog barking for no fucking reason to hoovering or them asking me for help. And now we're here. So, um, truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Just so much. Seriously, thank you. Right, Stiff Odds is a weird, shot on shitty old film student project feeling, gore fest, trippy as fuck early YouTube skit, downright fucking abomination of a movie. Even on the cover, it states if a riser head and a house of a thousand corpses had a bastard love child, Stiff Odds would be the afterbirth. And this was the review they chose to put on the front cover. But on the back, we have even more fun. The Grim Reaper himself, a conniving little twit who bears more than a slight resemblance to a raging erection. Fucking does it! I must have a weird looking cock then if you think that's what it should look like. The movie was produced by the most fitting company I've ever witnessed, Brain Damage Films. The cast consists of people that only have this movie as an acting credit. I actually reached out to Colin Allen to see if he would explain to me what actually happened on set. He never replied. As of recording this fucking wall of text, the official trailer is sitting at a grand total of 512 views. In five years. It has four reviews on IMDb. Literally nothing on Rotten Tomatoes. Now tell me, could this movie be any more obscure? So I've been putting this film off for nearly four years. It's took me that long to even comprehend what happened. So let's celebrate in style. This is stiff odds. Mr. Bin. Oh wow, I've got to start. This shot right here is the two stages of stiff odds, completely fucking brain dead or asleep. Dude one answers the phone and gets told that they're being evicted. The news lady says something about a murderer, but I really don't care. Constantly claiming that he was a sad, sad caterpillar, stuck in an overly whelming, sexy body. Right, there will be a lot of little strange, random bullshit dialogue in this movie. It's just trying to be off the wall so hard it falls flat. Or even deliberate fuck-ups that they leave in because they think it's funny. After watching this movie multiple times, I had this strange feeling and I just could not work out what it was and then on one viewing I saw something that I didn't pick up on before and it changed my entire view on this film. Stiff Odds has trauma wrote on the wall. This tiny four frames of video explained everything. Now I'm a boy who can get down with trauma. I don't always accept some of the defence people put for their movies but Stiff Odds Really takes this get out of the jail free card and fucking runs away with it. Anyways, where were we? I hate you. Chris has an that, that completely destroyed him. Oh. Fuck you, you cocksucker! I ought to kill you right now! Please do it. It'll do us all a favour. We then actually get the first little whiff of a plot. There's a TV advert for a death battle arranged by the devil between these lovely two set of combatants. Dude too wants to bet on the thugs because he can see it in their eyes. Sounds risky. Their eyes, man. Their eyes. Anyways, at a random graveyard, two people are using the Ouija board when ugh, this prick shows up. In between cuts, the two people are talking about John Wayne Gacy, a legit serial killer because they want to bring him back, I think. We then get an interaction between all three of them. Yes, three of them. I can speak for myself! Now, I can't even work out if this is insulting the schizophrenics or the transgenders. We randomly hear moaning, and then we just get fucking weird. So under these incredibly dark and filter heavy scenes, I'm guessing the devil has accidentally been summoned instead of Gacy. I'm really trying here guys. And they dig up a coffin to put in their car. <laughs> exactly how I feel after watching this. They stumble around and throw up some more, then they finish and go to the coffin. 
Right, part one of how to fix stiff odds. Learn how to fucking normalize audio. Look, I'll show you. I, got you stuck off the rim. I thought there were three. Right, stop. That that cut was way too instant. They just about finished their send, and it's night now. Okay then. I'm hungry. Let's go get breakfast. That was a flashback. I mean, <laughs> obviously, right? Breakfast. Thank you. I don't get it. Going back to the review on the front of the box. A Rise Ahead was a fucking weird film on the surface, but one with a deep underlying message about the uncertainty of fatherhood. Whereas, Stiff Odds is just, just fucking weird for being weird, psych. <laughs> Open the casket! It's wrong! It's wrong! It's fucking wrong! I'm not, I'm not even gonna start. Let's, let's carry on. They then open one of the caskets. Hey. How's it going? What the fuck? Oh, oh please do excuse me. Shit. Oh, gangway. The painfully obvious voiceover aside. Just why everything? He then steals the car. Further down the road, he opens the other casket to reveal Steve. I told you, never call me that. Oh, sorry. Looking good, Lucy. Watch it, mate. Tastes pretty good with cheese, dip. <sighs> right, part two of how to fucking fix stiff odds. Buy a fucking tripod and use the rule of thirds. Yeah. Being dead can bring out the best of someone. Is this comedy? Is this where I'm going wrong? So Pongo and girl, we haven't had a name yet. Are walking down an empty street. Are you? Are you? Are you all right, mover? Are you done? <laughs> what the act? The car blinking into existence. That fucking face. I'm losing it, man. I'm seriously losing it. So they get in and the lady jumps on the back. The thing about spiders is when they get married, the rocks don't even know it. The rocks aren't even invited because the spiders don't ask the rocks. This guy is insane, but he's actually the only rememberable part of this entire film. But now I have these hideous lobster hands. It's not so bad. It's not so bad having lobster hands. I can shave with them. <laughs> the woman on the back then, you know what, just watch. Right, part three of how to fix stiff... What's the fucking point anymore? Get your script. That's how you do it. Sam attacks her and steals a car. Crazy dude leaves the car and girl and Pongo chase. Then four more people appear from fucking nowhere and all congregate round this bin. Pongo dances. What are you doing? Huh? We are eating the moon! <laughs> oh, fuck. Duh. <laughs> and they all die. Sam turns up and they leave. That scene went nowhere. Oh, this prick again. We get a little speech about how Bert registers deaths and gets paid below minimum wages. So he hosts the death battles and it's infuriating. Sam explains that she has to kill the people that killed her and her friends. And then she literally tells a story in this really weird... And I'm... I don't... What? Okay. So what are you saying? I'm saying if you ask me any more questions, you can put your hands together. Okay then. Nice spot on the lens there, fellas. Then the rest of the crew roll up. I feel great, and you know why? Please fuck off. They go to kill them, but change their mind and go for dinner instead. Can we kill you now? No! Oh. Okay then. Oh boy! What a lovely house! We cut to a party where the gangster that originally killed Ivan, Lucy and Sam are. 
Bare ja, tak, kinda. Main gangster escapes and they chase him down. And then because it's after midnight, they all die again. Hello, do you have syphilis? <laughs> well, you better go catch it! I'm using that one. Would you like a cigar? Well, you can't have one! Okay, then Bert then bollocks them for not fulfilling their task. He sets a new task about getting one of the grave diggers to beat somebody to death with their own severed arm. J just go with it. They respawn at the graveyard that the fuck is at for whatever reason and kill him. Girl and Pongo are at a restaurant and the zombies burst in. Girl asks about the contract. They explain they have one more chance. Then Sam does something with her knife for no reason, really. Then they try to convince the grave robbers to kill someone. No. No, not really. But I do. I want to disembowel little babies and play fetch with their bloody carcasses. I want to slit their throats and masturbate to the sounds of them choking and vomiting. Seriously, what the fuck movie? This is far too edgy and far too fucked up. This goes on for one minute. Then Amy goes away and Pongo takes over, which Sam doesn't like. They leave and Sam pulls a gun on the waiter. That waiter. That one. Second time we've saw him. First time we saw his face, third top Billy. They leave the restaurant and girl gets shot. They chop her arm off. Here you go, sir. Just fucking dig it! Follow us! No shit he isn't gonna follow you. You just killed his only friend. Girl then goes to the afterlife and goes after Bert. Divining him and it pisses blood everywhere. Amy comes back and then takes over Pongo's body. The car enters the graveyard and ends up crashing. I'm genuinely upset that a car had to be smashed up for the sakes of stiff odds. Girl becomes a new Grim Reaper, possessing the severed arm to attack Pongo. She then teleports to the graveyard and reattaches it to the most unfitting music ever. She then picks up Pongo and punches him. She then kills him. Somehow. And brings him back. The zombies go to escape, but Pongo attacks Sam's hat for whatever reason. Fuck you. The two dudes talk about how they've lost their bet and the DVD tries to kill itself. Fight breaks out, someone loses their head. Somehow. Pongo digs in Lucy's stomach and pulls a baby out. All while doors are opening around the world. Pongo runs off with his fetus as a coin baby. Plays in the background. Quick fire, I'll give it something to cry about. Then this old bag does something, teleporting everyone into the after afterlife in a cafe where they all order cake. What a fucking cake do you want? Surprise cake. Girl and Pongo stroll in. Can I get some coffee, please? Thank you. Fastest service ever. I'm gonna go jump off a building. Who's up for it? And that's it. That's the end of Stiff Odds. Oh, her name was Sheba all along. Thank you for telling me at the end of the movie. So that was Stiff Odds, a movie I spent four years putting off and hoping to improve my video making skills to actually do this movie justice. And I should say welcome. Welcome to the insane state after watching this movie. I think you're going to like it here. Stiff Odds is a confusing clusterfuck of a bad movie, with shitty editing, cinematography, audio, acting, writing, story, pacing and presentation, all fucking dog shit. Words do not do enough justice to experience the true, full-on, astonishing confusion that this movie provides. Would I recommend watching it? Fuck no. But if you're having a talk with someone who's into bad movies and you want to trump their film that they suggest, point them towards Stiff Odds. Thank you guys for all the support. Um, if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments. If I make a video about them, I'll give you a shout out in the video. Apart from that, I'm so glad this is over. Um, my name is Josh. I don't have a sign off, so go away. It's been a long time coming.